Hello, welcome to the Kylo tutorial video series. I am Jagrut Sharma and this tutorial will show how to configure and run a scoop based injection in Kylo. This is part 2 of configuring and running a scoop based injection. In part 1, we covered registering the starter template. Now let us actually create a feed that ingests a table on each run. Tables storing metadata or lookup values may be good candidates for this kind of ingestion. It may be more efficient to ingest them fully at periodic intervals. Before we configure and run the feed, we will do a few checks. The first check is in the source database table. Here I am at the MySQL prompt and I am checking a database called finance and a table inside that database called purchase items history. I note that there are nine rows in the source table. The second check is for the database driver. Scoop's lib directory should contain the driver jar file. Here I verify that the driver file is present in Scoop's lib directory. The third check is for the HDFS landing directory. I want to ensure that it is available and it can be written to. So I verify that the directory, top level directory scoop import exists and for the purposes of this full load, I am going to write it in this subdirectory. So we note the location of this HDFS directory because we will use this for configuring the feed. The fourth check is in NiFi. Here I am at the NiFi screen. We need to configure a controller service that is able to provide a connection to the source database. So click this gear icon, click plus and select a controller service of type standard scoop connection service. It is being shown as invalid so we will set its configuration correctly. The first step is to rename it. MySQL finance scoop connection. Set the source driver. Set the connection string. Set the source username. Set the password mode and the password. Now it's in the disabled state, we'll click this lightning icon to enable it. We note the name of this service because we will use this to configure the application properties file. Which brings us to our fifth check. The fifth check is Kylo configuration check. One of the Kylo configuration files is application properties. We will edit this file to add a couple of configuration options. In application.properties, we will configure the controller service password using this convention, NiFi service and then the controller service name that we configured in lowercase dot password equal to the password to the database. And then the root of the HDFS landing location, which is scoop import. A note here, even though we are providing a clear text password in this case, Kylo provides a feature to encrypt passwords. Do check out the tutorial video for how to encrypt passwords in the property files. One additional check to verify before creating and running the feed is that the driver should also be present in thingbig's lib directory. So in this case the MySQL 
driver is present in the my in the thing big services lib directory now that we have completed our checks we will create the actual feed let's go back to the feed manager and we'll first create a category for the feed we'll create a category called financials give it a brief description and select an icon and save the category now we go to feeds click the plus icon we select our scope import template that we had imported in part one give it a name feed full purchase items history the system name will automatically be populated assign a category to this feed and provide a pre brief description purchase items history full continue to step 2 select the connection service from the drop down and this should give us the connection service that we just configured in NiFi then we start typing the table names and we are presented with a drop down of all the table names that are available via that connection so we select the purchase items history table that we want to ingest select full load provide a name for the job provide PO item ID as the source split by field leave this empty this empty if desired we can choose a compression algorithm for now I'm just going to leave it as none same for the extract data format we can select these options I'm going to leave it as text and then the HDFS directory this is automatically populated with the configuration that we just set in the application.properties file. I'm going to add a subdirectory here called purchase items history. And what to do if the HDFS directory already exists? So we'll fail the import. And this expression language here is a nice way to make sure that every time this feed runs, it writes to a unique partition continue to step 3 select the primary key we can choose to define partitions if we want for now I'm just going to keep things simple and continue to step 4 this step allows us to choose fields for indexing provide standardization rules and validation rules for now I'm going to keep things simple and continue to step five. We can provide an owner for this feed. We can provide a couple of tags. And continue to step six, where we schedule the run frequency of this feed. And for now, I'm going to schedule it to run every two minutes because we want to see two runs of this feed and then create the feed. So as we can see that the feed has been created and if I go to feeds, I can see that that feed is existing and it was created off the scoop template. Now in ops manager, I should be able to see this feed running. We can see that it is running. It is in a healthy state and we can drill down and actually check the different steps where it is in so currently it's in the it's a it's completed step one it's still running and it is and as we can see here step two step three step four all completed and the import was a success and in ops manager we can see that that feed has completed and the next round should be scheduled in 
couple of minutes as per our uh, timer setting. So meanwhile, while that runs, let's quickly switch over to HDFS and look at this directory and verify that data was written here. We should see a new directory under this and let's since we wrote in plain text format let us try to read this file and verify that it contains the nine rows as in the source table and we can see that that matches with the source table let's go and quickly check if the second round has run or not so we go in feed manager sorry operations manager feeds and we can see that the second run has started and it has been running since 13 since the last 18 seconds once this completes we will go and again verify that the second ingest was done in the full mode and all the nine rows were ingested again. If the source database had changed in the meantime, it would have pulled the full table once again. So we can see that the second feed completed and now let's go and quickly check in the in on HDFS. Now we should have two folders under this directory and this folder should also have nine rows. Let us quickly check. We can indeed see that there are nine rows in here. This concludes part two of the series. To recap, we created a feed from our scoop import template and we ran it for a couple of runs and we verified that the full table is getting ingested each time. Check out part 3 for creating and running a feed to do incremental table ingestion on the basis of last modified type of column.